Today we're going to take a look at making a stretchy text animation like this. This why, 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 which is a question I find myself asking a lot these days. And this was inspired by Matt Voice. I hope I'm saying that right. He makes these really great kinetic text animations like this. And so I wanted to take a look at dissecting this process, or at least um, how I would approach making something like this. So we're going to take a look at that in today's tutorial. So let's get to it. So this entire process could be done in After Effects from start to finish, but I actually want to start mine in Illustrator. I think it's going to be easier this way. I'm going to use Illustrator and then lay out my um, different stages of this from here to here to here in Illustrator and then push over each state of this using Overlord. So let's go over to Illustrator and start here. So I'm going to lay out each stage of the text and before I do that I'm going to want to find um, a font that's good for this and when looking for a font to make things easy for myself I want to find a font that has um, a bunch of different weights to it that will make it easy to kind of tween between. So, so this font that what's on, that's on Typekit, Jeff Bernini Sans. This has 80 fonts in it. That's really great because there's a ton of light weights, bold, extra bold italics, there's condensed, compressed, um, there's just tons of different weights and that's going to give us um, all, everything we need now to just kind of, that we can just plug in, you know, an, an extra bold narrow and then we can jump to, you know, a, a light one up here. So there's not going to be a ton of kind of handwork that if we want to, we can just kind of pick to and, and tween between them. That's what I'm going to be going for to make this effect kind of really easy to do. So now that I have a font picked out like this with a bunch of different weights between them, go into Illustrator and start setting up my boards. So here's one to begin with. This will be my starting point here. And let me just duplicate this artboard. I'm going to drag it over and I'll make my next board, which I think is going to be kind of a more italic um, tall one maybe like this maybe a little bit thicker maybe like to here center this up a little bit and then i'll make one more that is really tall and really thin so let's find the thinnest weight which is going to be where is this guy? Thinnest weight I can find. Compress light italic and make it really big. Like this. Sorry, not italic. So this compressed one and tall like this. Cool, that'll work for now. Okay. So these are my three states that I'm gonna go to. And for now, I'm going to take off this outline. Don't need this, it's just for reference. Cool. And what I'm also going to do is I want to convert all of these to outlines. I don't need the text, I just want the outlines. And then hop back into After Effects and let's create a new composition. Mine's going to be 1080 by 1080. Great. And then I'm just going to push over my background and my first text. Cool. So if you, if you want to do this all in After Effects, you would just make your text and convert this to outlines by going to right clicking it and creating shapes from text. And you can just set up your boards in here. I'm just going to use Overlord to push things, but this is how you could do it and follow along otherwise. So now I will just lock my background here. Cool. So now what I want to do is make keyframes for the path for all of these. So I'm gonna search for the path and just toggle a keyframe down all of these. Cool. 
Now I'm going to go back into Illustrator and I'm going to push this next stage in. Now I have the reference for this next one and I'm going to do the same thing on this layer. Search for the path and just make a keyframe on all of these. So now I have all of these keyframes here on this shape. I'm going to copy these, just hide this layer out of the way, and maybe go ahead one second with all of these keyframes selected here, highlight them, and just paste these on. Okay, now we have this shape that's tweening between them. But there's a little problem, as you can see. Now yours might have worked perfectly fine, but mine didn't. They're kind of shuffling between them. So let's dissect why this is happening. If you look in and you see on each layer, one of these um, bezier points has, it looks different than the other ones. This is what's called the first vertex. It's the most important one. So if we're gonna go in here and on each letter, we're gonna set the first vertex by right clicking, going to the mask and shape path. We're gonna highlight on one of these keyframes, right click on the mask and shape path and set the first vertex. Now you can see that this one has highlighted and it's like the special point now. This is the important point on this first letter on the W. And then go over now to this keyframe and with the corresponding point, select it and set this one as the first vertex. Now if we go back, now this letter is fixed. And this will work if you have the same amount of points in both letters, or at both stages of the letter. See how they're, they're staying the same, same amount of, of uh, points? If you have a different amount of points, this might not work again. So you might have to go in and delete a vertex or something to make sure that they're corresponding. So this will work if you have you know, letters that look roughly the same. So I'm just gonna do this again now for each letter. So this is the first vertex here. So I can just go over and make sure that this is staying the same. So now that's the first vertex. Great. Do this again for the Y. That's the first vertex. Make sure this one is the first vertex. Cool. Now our exclamation point, something weird is happening here where these shapes are flipping. So let's diagnose this problem. I'm gonna open up this folder layer here. Now, these two paths are housed in this one group, see? This group is the question mark. But this path, it starts out as the dot. I'm gonna just label things so you can see. And this is the, I don't know what you call it. That's like the, this thing, whatever. But then they flip. So what needs to happen is not that. So I'm gonna delete these uh, secondary keyframes here. And I'm gonna un unhide this, this top layer here. I'm gonna go ahead and locate these shapes on this reference layer here and just copy them down onto my animation layer. So if this is the, that's the upper part of the exclamation point, just copy this keyframe and paste it where it belongs here. Boom. This is the dot it looks like. That's the dot, great, copy that and paste it onto the dot. Cool, now this should be working right. Almost, we just need to set our vertex again. That's the first vertex there. And that should be the first vertex now there. And there we go. Our morph, we got a mighty morphing Y. All right. So now maybe we can just ease these up like this. Boom, boom. I can go ahead and delete this layer. Don't need this anymore. And I will import the next stage, which is this Y. Let's go ahead and push this in. And we can do this again. I'm gonna search for the path, make keyframes on all the path letters, layers, whatever. 
copy these all. And maybe we can just paste these all on and see if it just works now. Okay, almost. I'll go ahead and hide this top layer. And it's almost working again. We're just having a little flip on the W. So we just need to reset our first vertex here. Okay, the B right here. Cool, and let's ease these up. And let's see this back. Boom, great. And now what we can do is maybe we want this whole thing to get like taller. So I'll grab some of these bottom keyframes. Why do I keep telling these keyframes? These are path points or something. These are paths. Pull these down like that. Grab these top ones like this. Maybe pull these up here. That could be cool. Pull this down like that. And just edit this path. Boom, boom, boom. Great. I'll go ahead and save this. So now we have the basis of this um, animation in here. Now one thing that's also really nice that um, Matt does in a lot of his things is he adds some kind of like anticipation before. So let's go ahead and drag this layer out and we'll just make keyframes here and let's add some of that anticipation. So we'll make this initial keyframe, leave that as is, and then go back to our starting keyframe here. And maybe we'll just grab a bunch of these top keyframes, key path points, gotta stop calling them keyframes and just kind of drag them down in towards each other, like this, right, like that. Make sure everything is eased, and then see what that looks like. Cool, and then since this kind of slides this diagonal way, like that, maybe this wants to um, kind of anticipate left, the opposite way, but I, I think I want to grab like all of these and kind of just slant it that way and grab these and slant them that way. Maybe something like that. I mean, that's a little bit wonky there, but that doesn't look great. Let me undo that and try again. Just grab these top points, slide them one or two to the left, grab these bottom points, slide them one or two to the right and see what that looks like. That looks better. Cool. Great. And then we would just want to copy the, these keyframes and reverse them so it loops back down. I'm just going to use this clone tool in motion and clone them back. See if we have a nice little loop going. Okay. Why? 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 And if anybody does know why, please leave a comment and let me know why. I would love to know. Great. And then I'll just do a few things to maybe add a little more texture to this. Maybe I'll add a, a drop shadow, right? Drop shadow like this. Cool. Maybe I can add a little stroke to this, like this, like that. And it would probably be nice if we took all of these frames and just gave them a little bit of a stagger like this. So I'm just gonna use Rift here and maybe just stagger all of these frames. Maybe I do two frames here like this, just to give it a little bit of an offset like that, I think helps a lot. Cool. And then maybe we can take this whole layer and just duplicate it, drag it under and give this a color overlay and we'll make that color overlay black and then this and turn the stroke off and move it over a little bit and make this layer maybe like 50 percent now we have a nice little shadow there we go i think if we just tweak the colors a little bit this is looking pretty good maybe we'll move this just over a few frames so it's looping a little bit better. And 
there we go. We have a nice stretchy Y. All right, so let me know if you guys like this tutorial. If you wanna see more like it, let me know why. Let me know why you liked it. Uh, leave a comment down below. And let me know what else you guys wanna see. Hit me up in the chat. And I'll see you next time. All right. Goodbye.